Hi everyone, I'm Sandy and I'm here again with my 1001 book countdown. Did I get into the single digits for 2021? Let's find out. All right, so as always, if you're not familiar with the 1001 book countdown, I will leave a lovely card up here for you where you can go check out the concept and all of the details. But basically, it's book reviews off of the 1001 books you must read before you die list. And I am just documenting my way, um, documenting my journey through the books um, and having a lot of fun with it. But for today, I'm going to go ahead and put up my numbers, which are, I'm trying to remember them, 963 and 10, which is my 2021 number. We'll see if we get into the single digits today. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and then we're just going to go ahead and talk about the book um, or books. We'll see. No, we're going to talk about the book. There's only one. Um, and that book is Hawksmoor by Peter Aykroyd. I did this as a buddy read with Greg at Another Bibliophile Reads and Alice at Alice in the Giant Bookshelf. I will leave both of their channels linked in the description below. They w were wonderful. I highly recommend you go and check them out if you're not familiar with them. But Hawksmoor, um, yeah, Hawksmoor is an interesting book. It's perfect for this October sp spooky time um, of year, really. It was written or published in 1985 and appears to be the third of uh, Aykroyd's works. Uh, it is considered a work of post modernism. I had to look it up. I didn't know what postmodernism meant, um, but it is supposed to be an example of that. It's also supposed to be his most popular or most well-received work. Uh, it follows a so the book itself follows a character whose name is Nicholas Dyer, who is an architect in the 18th century, who's been commissioned to rebuild churches after the Great Fire. And he is a character who has um, decided that there needs to be a sacrifice at the churches. And apparently Aykroyd, uh, uh, Aykroyd um, actually modeled him after a real architect whose name was Hawksmoor. And so you get that tie in with the name right away. But it follows Nicholas Dyer as he's going through and trying to build the churches and sacrificing people um, for what purpose. They don't really tell you the purpose around why. Uh, it's all very spooky and mysterious like. And then it will transition into a more modern time. And according to what I did on the research, it said 1980. I don't remember seeing 1980 in the book, but it does uh, definitely is a more modern time. And there is a similar murder that happens in the current day and then the point of view flips back and forth constantly between the two about halfway th through the book you're introduced to a detective whose name is also Hawksmoor the namesake of the novel and he is investigating the murders in the current time <clears throat> There is a lot of confusing content in this book though, because Aykroyd uh, used character names that were the same across the two time periods. So you might have a Tommy in one and a Tommy in another and a Ned and Ned. And so you're always just trying to figure out, okay, what time frame are we in? And was this actually only happening in one time frame or both time frames? And who was Tommy? And how did he really relate to everything or how did the characters relate to each other? And so you go through the whole novel just really not knowing for sure what's kind of going on. Is it a dark and sinister thing? Is there a supernatural component to it? Is it something that it is just two sets of murders happening at the same locations over centuries. Uh, and you go through the whole novel not really knowing and understanding that part of it. The writing was actually really um, very good from my perspective. I The first couple of chapters I had some trouble following, which made me really glad I was doing this as part of a buddy read because the both Greg and Alice you were able to give some great insights on it. And we could talk back and forth about the different types of ideas as far as what was going on. Um, but it was one of those books that you just kind of go, okay, is this, is this a, um, is this the occult? Is this evil? Is this supernatural? Is this someone, you know, murdering, just murdering people? Not just, but is, is this someone murdering people? Just what is going on through this book? And so as you work your th way through to the end of the book, 
that's where it fell apart for me uh, is at the end. Unfortunately, it did fall apart because I wanted it to have a better explanation of what happened um, or what the correlation was between the different characters and the timeline. And it was all still very mysterious at the end of this. Um, I don't want to obviously spoil the book uh, and it's open to a lot of interpretation on what exactly happens at the end of this as you're going Going through it. Um, Greg actually found a review out there who had similar actual thoughts about the book that it just needed a more kind of, I think, definitive end to it. But it was very enjoyable to read. There were some very funny things that happened as far as the characters go or the character, how he correlated the names. Um, there are a couple of oh my gosh moments in here. There's also some blood and gore in this. Without a doubt, there is some, some disturbing scenes in it but overall it was kind of a mess unfortunately I wanted it to just really I wanted it to really resolve and it just didn't but with that that is Hawksmoor by Peter Aykroyd and with that we go from 963 to 962 but it is not on the 2021 list so we are still at 10. So I didn't make it into single digits yet. Uh, but for next week, as far as continuing reads uh, for this month and when I will get into the single digits, <laughs> um, I am still continuing my read of Bleak House, as you can see, as of the point of filming this. I'm about halfway through. It's going to extend more than likely into December or into November. Oh, I don't know what month it is. Into November because this is just a chunker of a book. Uh, and so it's also one of those, uh, in order to finish it by the end of the month, I'd have to read about 50 pages a day. That's probably not going to happen because uh, this is a book I tend to read about 20 a day uh, and there have been days I've put it down and not put it back up. But Bleak House is uh, one of the books. It is it is really starting to get very interesting now. There's been a couple bombshells dropped uh, and so it is picking up a little bit. So maybe we'll see. We'll see if it we'll see if it catches my or can make me read uh, more than just the 20 pages per day and I do finish it in October. We'll see. Uh, and I have the hiccups. That's not good. And then the next book that I'm reading is The Tin Flute by Gabrielle Roy. And I have to tell you, I am loving this book quite a bit. And um, I am now, I have only one section left. I'm waiting for the group. This is a group read with a few uh a couple booktubers and a couple subscribers. I'm kind of waiting for them to catch up because I don't want to read the rest of the book without the week three update. Uh, but this is one that uh, I will have in the video next week. The question is, is it in my 2021 list? And then the last one, and then the last one is The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien. And so this is a buddy read with my husband. And um, let's just say, Buddy Reads not going too well. <laughs> uh, as much as I'm enjoying this book, he's not. Uh, he's already said he doesn't, He just the premise behind it. And he, I think his original thing was, um, it's just basically talking literally about the things they carried. And so uh, I hope he still continues to give it a chance. Uh, but yeah, it's not going well. I, I told him to pick the book next time. But those are the three books off of the 1001 Book Countdown that are in progress. And hopefully I will have um, a great update for you next weekend. And as always, like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, everyone, thanks. Bye.